Yeah. I can't. No, there's, there's really, it's, I, I, um, our entire drive up from New York was the entire discography of Steely Dan, <laughs> which, you know, a lot of people think is, uh, excessively produced music, but I think it's musicality and prowess of the highest order. It's just extraordinary music. These guys are great, great composers and great. Um, Nusfat Fateh Ali Khan, the uh, Kowali singer, is someone who I've really discovered and rediscover and rediscover. And for those who don't know who he is, um, when my son Adam start, first started playing trumpet, he was kind of a Freddie Hubbard clone. And he could play that, and that he could play that is amazing. But I said to him, if you want to learn about improvisation phrasing, study this, study Fateh Ali Khan, and check out the Kowali singing of uh, what it is and what that kind of improvisation is. Um, I'm always rediscovering all kinds of, I love uh, Mos Def. Love Mos Def. I, uh, back, uh, I const constantly, to my great joy, I rediscover Bud Powell. Um, I discover, rediscover uh, Her, uh, Herbie Hancock, Thelonious Monk. I mean, there's a lot of great young players that I enjoy. I enjoy very much Rudrash Mahanthapa, who I just recorded with. The offense, I mean, on the com Cuba, the conversation continued, is our newest album. And on my album, which comes out August 21st, <clears throat> Rudrash is the guest soloist on a suite that I composed called the Afro Latin Jazz Suite, which was uh, recorded in Cuba during the historic announcement by our great presidents, Raul Castro and Barack Obama. And we were in the studio in rehearsing when those announcements were made. And Rudrash was there for that. And I've just always loved, I've always loved anyone who discovers a different way, a more unique to them way to play this music. And Rudrash is that kind of person. He just, he'll do, he'll figure out a way to do, and it's not, it's not as if he reinvents the wheel. He's speaking within the language, which is, this is also what I really love about him and others like him. He'll speak the language, but through his filter. And I think that's what jazz is all about. It's not about replication. It's not about recreation. It's about taking the seeds that our forefathers left us, planting them in our souls, and allowing what comes forth from us to speak as that voice. And I, I just, love artists that honor that. I want to be really like romantic about this and say that, oh, I just walk along the beach and God speaks to me. Actually, sometimes I'm so behind on my deadlines that I'm forced to sit, sit down. But here's an interesting thing. I actually find that the passion and the inspiration have been there all along. And I find that I think it's funny, in our house we have a joke because my wife will say to me, don't you have a commission do? And I'll say, yeah, I do, and I'm working on it. And she goes, right, and I am. But stuff is gestating in my head, stuff is like, I mean, there's always music in my head, there's too much music in my head. And so when I sit down to actually put it on paper, it sometimes is just, um, just a matter of almost transcribing what I've already created. The other thing, though, I should say is that there's, for me, Creation is also very much like my life is very chaotic and there's no one method. Sometimes things come to me completely realized in a very specific manner and sometimes I have to really eke out every note. Um, I think it's difficult to compose um, because I try to inject honesty into everything I write. I mean, I guess everybody does. I don't mean to sound self-serving, but it's very painful to me. And I didn't do it till much later in my life. I didn't start composing until I was in my 30s because I grew up in the household of a great composer. But um, it always changes. It's always evolving. When Miles Davis died, I was devastated, not only because we lost him, because I lost the opportunity to ever play with Miles. So that was one artist who, uh, I also really wanted to play with Ornette, and Ornette just uh, recently left us. I, um, I mean, it's funny, but I, I love uh, Albert Eiler. I mean, I, I really kind of come from the Chicago school, the art ensemble of Chicago, 
Um, I'd love to play that music more. You know, they put us into these boxes. I'm the Latin jazz guy, Afro Latin jazz Arturo. No matter what I do, no matter how crazy my writing and my playing is, people go, oh, it's Latin jazz. And I guess that's okay. But I, I, I don't see those divisions. So I'd love to play with Yo-Yo Ma. I'd love to play with, uh, I would love to have played with uh, Jimi Hendrix, man. I would have died to play with Jimi Hendrix. I would have loved to, I would love, I would love to do a project with Lupe Fiasco. You know, I'm like, wow, there's so many people who I love and admire and who I loved and admired that I would love to play with. I, I just finished telling, it's really funny because I just finished telling my wife yesterday as we were having the Steely Dan the thon that I would, I would drop everything to do a year tour with Steely Dan. I just go, hey, I'd go <laughs> sit in the bus, sit on the plane for a year. I mean, a lot of things would fall by the wayside, but I would do that in a heartbeat. Just because at heart, I'm a real, I'm a musician. I'm a pianist. <laughs> My name is Arturo O'Farrell.